Many famous geographers and non-geographers who have attempted to define the discipline in a few short words. The concept has also changed throughout the ages, making it difficult to create a concise, universal geography definition for such a dynamic and all-encompassing subject. After all, Earth is a big place with many facets to study. It affects and is affected by the people who live there and use its resources. But basically, geography is the study of the surface of Earth and the people who live there, and all that encompasses. The recipe for making any creature is written in its DNA. So last November when geneticists published the near-complete DNA sequence of the long-extinct woolly mammoth, there was much speculation about whether we could bring this behemoth back to life. Creating a living, breathing creature from a genome sequence that exists only in a computer's memory is not possible right now. But someone someday is sure to try it, predicts Stefan Schuster, a molecular biologist at Pennsylvania State University. University Park, and had driving force behind the Mammoth Genome Project. It is understandable that the government would look outside of Medicare to get the efficiency-related changes it wants. If Medicare was capable of delivering those things, it would have already done so. The objections to making such a move will be about the potential loss of jobs from Medicare. Given how labor-intensive the current system is, this will be a genuine concern, but one that is facing all industries dealing with modernization through improved technology. Plants serve as the conduit of energy into the biosphere, provide food and materials used by humans, and they shape our environment. According to Erhard and Frommer, the three major challenges facing humanity in our time are food, energy, and environmental degradation. All three are plant-related. All of our food is produced by plants, either directly or indirectly via animals that heat them. Plants are a source of energy production and they are intimately involved in climate change and a major factor in a variety of environmental concerns, including agricultural expansion and its impact on habitat destruction and waterway pollution. When our skin is directly exposed to the sun, our bodies make vitamin D, a vital tool that helps with calcium absorption and building strong bones. Some of it comes from diet, but a good portion also comes from the sun. And according to the Mayo Clinic, as little as 10 minutes of sun exposure can provide us with our daily dose. According to the Vitamin D Council, your body can produce 10,000 to 25,000 IU of vitamin D in just a little under the time it takes for your skin to turn pink. It is often assumed that when Western firms, 
or any firm for that matter, reach out across borders to establish a factory outlet here, an assembly plant there or a subsidiary in some far-off location, they do so through directly investing and thereby wholly owning such facilities. In the 1970s and 1980s, among the low-cost manufacturing overseas operations, this was indeed often the case, but increasingly Western firms started to conduct their business at a distance through a variety of indirect means, of which subcontracting became the principal arrangement. Critical thinking involves looking at something you may have seen many times and examining it from many different angles and perspectives. It involves going beyond the obvious or beyond easy to seek new understanding and rare solutions. It involves looking at common issues with uncommon eyes, known problems with new skepticism, everyday conflicts with probing curiosity and daily challenges with greater attention to detail. While accounting focuses on the day-to-day -day management of financial reports and records across the business world, finance uses the same information to project future growth and to analyze expenditure in order to strategize company finances. By studying this major, you get to have a better insight on the market, with the right knowledge and skills acquired you should be able then when you graduate to advise others in making strong investments. This major will help you gain responsibility of predicting and analyzing the potential for profit and growth assessing monetary resources, utilizing accounting statistics and reports, and also looking externally for future funding options. Electronics come in all shapes and sizes, but there's been a limit on their flexibility. Now, researchers say they've created electronics that can be shaped in virtually any way, including bent, stretched and even tightly coiled. They published their results in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Silicon is the principal ingredient in electronics, and it's inflexible and brittle. To overcome this constraint, the researchers first developed one-dimensional, single crystal silicon electronics, which they reported in 2005. The crystals could be stretched without losing their properties. Then last summer they demonstrated that they could build tiny circuits that were connected by tiny metal bridges. The final product could be bent and placed over a curved surface. When people worry about a glut of liquidity, they are thinking of the first of these concepts. If money is too abundant or too cheap, inflationary pressures may build up or bubbles may appear in financial markets, until central banks tighten policy or market opinion suddenly changes. A slackening of economic activity or a drop in asset prices can leave households, businesses and financial institutions in trouble if their balance sheets are not liquid enough, the second concept, or if they cannot find a buyer for assets.
At the height of summer, the Antarctic, tourist ships move gently around the coast. Even 30 years ago such sights would have been unthinkable, but today people are willing to pay large sums of money to see the last real wilderness in the world. In the Arctic, careless human exploitation in the past has damaged the fragile ecosystem. Today concerned governments are trying to find ways to develop the region while caring for the very special natural environment. Because the Antarctic is less accessible than the Arctic, it is still largely undamaged by humans, although holes in the ozone layer above the Antarctic have already been discovered. Many people believe that one way to preserve the area is to make the whole region into a world park, with every form of exploitation internationally banned. Paris is very old. There has been a settlement there for at least 6,000 years and its shape has been determined in part by the River Seine, and in part by the edicts of Frances rulers. But the great boulevards we admire today are relatively new, and were constructed to prevent any more barricades being created by the rebellious population. That work was carried out in the middle 19th century. The earlier Paris had been in part a maze of narrow streets and alleyways. But you can imagine that the work was not only highly expensive, but caused great distress among the half a million or so whose houses were simply razed, and whose neighborhoods disappeared. What is done cannot usually be undone, especially when buildings are torn down. Chimpanzee posture, gestures, and facial expressions communicate many messages and emotions between various individuals. When greeting a dominant individual following an absence or in response to an aggressive gesture, nervous subordinates may approach with submissive signals, crouching, presenting the hindquarters, holding a hand out accompanied by pant grunts or squeaks. In response, the dominant individual may make gestures of reassurance, such as touching, kissing, or embracing. Descendants of the Maya living in Mexico still sometimes refer to themselves as the corn people. The phrase is not intended as metaphor. Rather, it's meant to acknowledge their abiding dependence on this miraculous grass, the staple of their diet for almost 9,000 years. 40% of the calories Mexican eats in a day comes directly from corn, most of it in the form of tortillas. So, when a Mexican says I am maize or corn walking, it is simply a statement of fact. The very substance of the Mexican's body is to a considerable extent a manifestation of this plant. A novel device for helping farmers to dry out hay more quickly has won a University of Glasgow graduate a prestigious design award. Gavin Armstrong, 23, from Kippen, Stirlingshire scooped the Glasgow 1999 design medal for his design for a swath inverter a device for flipping over a hay crop to help dry out the damp underside. Dry hay is an essential farmyard food source for sheep and cows. Gavin came up with the design as part of his product design engineering degree course run in conjunction with Glasgow School of Art. 
He built a working prototype of the device which is powered and towed by a tractor and uses a pair of parallel belts to invert the swath. The rollers are driven from one hydraulic motor and are geared so as to spin at the same speed and in opposite directions ensuring that the touching inner two faces of the belt that perform the inversion move rearwards at the same speed. The Romans glorified the bravery shown in the arena, but trivialized the events and degraded the participants. Mosaic pictures of executions and combats, graphically violent to our eyes, were displayed in the public rooms and even dining rooms in the homes of wealthy Romans. How can the viewer today possibly understand such images? Until fairly recently, modern authors writing about the arena minimized its significance and represented the institutionalized violence as a sideline to Roman history. The tendency was also to view the events through our own eyes and to see them as pitiful or horrifying, although to most Romans empathy with victims of the arena was inconceivable. In the past few decades, however, scholars have started to analyze the complex motivations for deadly public entertainments and contradictory views of gladiators as despised, yet beloved hero slaves. All approaches aim to increase blood flow to areas of tension and to release painful knocks of muscle known as trigger points. Trigger points are tense areas of muscle that are almost constantly contracting, says Kippen. The contraction causes pain, which in turn causes contraction, so you have a vicious circle. This is what deep tissue massage aims to break. The way to do this, as I found out under Ajitangbe's elbow, is to apply pressure to the point, stopping the blood flow, and then to release which causes the brain to flood the affected area with blood, encouraging the muscle to relax. At the same time, says Kippen, you can fool the tensed muscle into relaxing by applying pressure to a complementary one nearby. If you cause any muscle to contract, its opposite will expand. So, you try to trick the body into relaxing the muscle that is in spasm. I use the word civilization now for the first time, because before the Bronze Age there is nothing that we would define as civilization. Civilization involves the establishment of permanent dwelling areas that we call cities as opposed to villages. Agricultural villages will have existed all over the place in the Late Stone Age, in the Neolithic period, as it is known. But there is a difference and the critical difference is that a city contains a number of people who do not provide for their own support. That is to say, they don't produce food. They need to acquire it from somebody else. Instead, they do various things like governing and are priests, and are bureaucrats, and are engaged in other non-productive activities that depend upon others to feed them. That's the narrowest definition of cities. The morality of the welfare state depends on contribution and responsibility. Since some people don't contribute and many are irresponsible, the choices of those who do contribute and are responsible are either to tolerate the free riders, 
refuse to pay for the effects of their irresponsibility or trust the state to educate them. Hence the government campaigns against smoking, alcoholism, obesity and gas guzzling, the first two solidly in place, the other two ramping up. But the British state now goes further, it acts in favor of sexual and racial minorities. In the case of gay men and women this means progressively removing the legal disadvantages under which they have lived, and ensuring that society as a whole observes the new order. Despite transport problems being a topic of frequent dinner table conversation, comprehensive assessment of policy direction for transport has been the subject of remarkably little academic analysis. This chapter introduces the scope of the book, which is intended to help redress this shortcoming. The primary focus is on urban transport policy, with the emphasis being on policy analysis rather than analysis of the policy process. Importantly, the chapter sets out some key propositions that have been important in shaping the author's approach to the particular matters that are considered in subsequent chapters. The Roman people had at first been inclined to regard the French Revolution with either indifference or derision. But as the months went by and the emigres who remained in the city were less and less hopeful of an early return home, the mood of the Romans became increasingly antagonistic towards the assassins of Paris. The nationalization of church property in France, the confiscation of papal territories, the dwindling of contributions and the paucity of tourists and pilgrims all contributed to an exacerbation of this antagonism. When the French Convention, determined to gain international recognition for the Republic, dispatched envoys to Rome, the people turned upon them in fury. Life in the UK 2012 provides a unique overview of well-being in the UK today. The report is the first snapshot of life in the UK to be delivered by the Measuring National Wellbeing Programme and will be updated and published annually. Wellbeing is discussed in terms of the economy, people and the environment. Information such as the unemployment rate or number of crimes against the person are presented alongside data on people's thoughts and feelings, for example, satisfaction with our jobs or leisure time and fear of crime. Together, a richer picture on how society is doing is provided. The fall of smallpox began with the realization that survivors of the disease were immune for the rest of their lives. This led to the practice of ferulation a process of exposing a healthy person to infected material from a person with smallpox in the hopes of producing a mild disease that provided immunity from further infection. The first written account of ferulation describes a Buddhist nun practicing around 1022 to 1063 AD. By the 1700s, this method of ferulation was common practice in China, India, and Turkey. In the late 1700s European physicians used this and other methods of ferulation, but reported devastating results in some cases. Overall, 
2% to 3% of people who were variolated died of smallpox, but this practice decreased the total number of smallpox fatalities by tenfold. Look at the recent most respected company survey by the Financial Times. Who are the most respected companies and business leaders at the current time? Rather predictably, they are Jack Welch and General Electric, and Bill Gates and Microsoft. Neither has achieved their world-class status through playing nice. Welch is still remembered for the brutal downsizing he led his business through and for the environmental pollution incidents and prosecutions. Microsoft has had one of the highest profile cases of bullying market dominance of recent times and Gates has been able to achieve the financial status where he can choose to give lots of money away by being ruthless in business. Everybody needs fresh water. Without water people, animals and plants cannot live. Although a few plants and animals can make do with salt water, all humans need a constant supply of fresh water to stay fit and healthy. Of the total supply of water on the earth, only about 3% of it is fresh, most of that is stored as ice snow at the poles, or is so deep under the surface of the earth that we cannot get to it. Despite so much of the water being out of reach, we still have a million cubic miles of it that we can use. That's about 4,300,000 cubic kilometers of fresh water to share out between most of the plants, animals, people on the planet.